yeah, I've had a lot of people kind of request me to, to do something. Um, and I know there's a lot of questions that a lot of people have, but I think the biggest thing here is you're here for a reason. And the way that I got you guys here is I'm not selling you anything. Right. And so that I think in itself is important to transfer over to your, your prospecting, your business, um, you know, all of that, because it's working for me and I'm able to sell, you know, these builds. And so I want to kind of give back to you guys of like, what is it that I can help with? Um, you know, you guys lead the conversation and I can go from there and I'll be transparent. Like my goal is not to sell you anything. Um, my goal is to really be there to help you, um, along with Adam and Brendan. Um, you guys want this. I'm not trying to convince you this. And I think that's super important to take the way that I got you here, take the value that I can help provide on top of what Adam, Brandon, Raul, Cody do, um, and, and flip that into your business. So I'll do this every Sunday. If it grows and, and people want another day, I can make another time for another day as well. But I literally put this together last night at 1030 at night, which is great. Raise your hand and and we can go through whatever whatever help that you want between prospecting, sales, setting up the systems. We would go from there. So yeah, Brandon, what's up, man? Yeah. Uh, thanks for putting this on. This is great. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit further into the conversation that we had the other day about the email machine. And I've right. been going through that master class. I'm kind of scrubbing through it again. But my question was the master class uh, of, of Lee Jen Jay. Uh, Lee Jen Jay. Okay. Yeah. Cause he's, he's presenting a workflow to clean the emails and it starts off with using Apollo. And there's a step in there where he's saying to use trusted leads like trustedleads.io for the ordering of the of the leads is that a step that you do and what is that like what is that part of it is that something you do in your workflow trustedleads.io so he might have changed he might have changed it trusted leads is the same thing as um million verifier yeah because that's the next step after so i'm trying to see if there's like a step in there that's required to really refine that list? No, for me, like I said, I mean, the, or when I, when I am doing, uh, let, let me share my screen. When I, I don't shit, I shared the wrong one. When I, I'm getting my leads insta in, into instantly. Right. Um, like for instance, like this campaign, right? Right now I have 737. I come and I go and I scrape them from what I showed you the other day. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what I showed you the other day. And I clean those leads inside Million Verifier. So right. Jen and Jay is going to tell you you know, there's probably a couple, there, there's a couple of, of options to use. He specifically somewhere in that video said <laughs> that million verifier is the most accurate. You can also go to something called like Sumo or Absolute Sumo and you can find a bunch of like life, life talk, life law, um, uh, like you can find a bunch of lifelong, um, you know, lifetime deals. So like optimize deliverability with AI set up unlimited autoresponder, automate tasks and more. I don't know. There was one like million verified, like zero bounce. I mean, the zero bounce supposedly is pretty good. Um, this is a lifelong, 
you know, one time purchase. And then you can come through here and you can see like you get for $89, you get 24,000 cleaned emails, right? But over here, you know, for $49, I can get 25,000. And when I go through the email verification here, they don't charge me for this 70 or this 32. They only charge me for 136. So as many emails as I have in there, it's only charging me for 136. So that's not counting against my 25,000 credit. Or right now I have 2,000. I think I bought you know, 10,000 at one point and I'm down to, to 2,000. So when I go Yeah, I just, I don't know what that step was. I don't know why that was necessary if you're using the million bar, million verifier i just wondered what he meant by order your your email leads with trusted me yeah well the reason being is because if you start to get like what, what i did actually i i kind of fucked this up one time um i this one just added about so I had 2% bounce. I forgot to run them through a uh, million verifier. So I was mm -hmm. getting them from, <laughs> excuse me, I was getting them from um, Apollo and I uploaded them in here and then I realized, oh shit, I didn't, didn't, I didn't put them in there. And so uh, through a million verifiers, so I had 14. And what that does is that can affect this got disconnected that can affect your health score and it probably bounced mine down just a little bit here um like the remaining these i mean as long as they're above 90 percent like they're going to end up as inbox but you got to keep monitoring these like this so that you are landing in the inbox and you know you're you're getting good numbers anything like 60 percent with a with a two percent click rate is like phenomenal when he says and i'm way above that um mm -hmm. i actually just sold one of these from a cold email he just emailed me it was i woke up this morning and i had five thousand dollars but it looks like his thing uh failed from the zip code and so here he's like I signed the paperwork. I tried to issue via our credit card, but it declined not trusting the source. Something, something. So like I, this stuff works. Like I just woke up. This is 16 minutes ago, right before this call started. And it's all happening through the cold email from, from this stuff. For sure. And so Nick, do you ever use Apollo to like filter some of those leads who are, I know he goes through like a phase of how to use Apollo where you can like really filter out some of those leads to see who's more likely to take you up on your offer. Do you ever use that feature in there? Yeah. So like all those parameters on. Yeah. And I think I explained this to you today is like first I do it manually until you get everything organized and it starts working for you it might take a little bit of time like this has taken me since august to start getting this down so yeah like when i met you guys in los angeles that was august like third like maybe third person yeah. today is october so all of august all of september it's taken me to get to this point and the majority of it was I really honed in on what Lead Gen J teaches. And so, um, Michael, I'm going to put you on quickly because your thing is making noise. Um, I really honed in on what Lead Gen J teaches because uh, I know it works. He, he, needs, he makes $600,000 a month and he's in for like you know, list, he's on the fortune 500 list for his company called Otter, Otter PR. And so I do use Apollo. I get all the leads manually right now from Apollo this week. I have a scraper that I hired somebody on Upwork to do. And the only reason I paid $600 to do that 
is because I am getting $5,000 transactions, a $600, $600 scraper custom built for me is working because now I have a $5,000 built that he's paying for. And that 5,000 came from 600 emails being sent out. So for 1200 emails, I'm expecting to at least get another sale. Yeah. And so that's when it gave me the clear, okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Actually, I had a sale before that. This is the second, this, this guy today is the second one. So, um, it's taken about a month to build the scraper, but I found somebody on Upwork who I can share with you, you know, his name and contact information when, when you're ready, uh, to have that built so that, you know, you can have this machine. The biggest thing is having the machine in the background do the work for you. So you're not working in the business, you're working on the business. Like now I can take my Sunday and sit here and give back to you guys while I know tomorrow I'm going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this scraper operating for me and I'm going to get 500, 300 to 500 new emails a, a week, a day from that scraper to go out and send out 500 emails knowing that my ratio right now is about for every 600, I'm going to get a sale. So that could be one new sale a day on average in the next month or so when this is operating. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Scott? Hey, you doing? First of all, thank you for putting this on. Um, I I was lucky enough. I hit my phone about an hour ago and saw this. I was like, oh, yeah, waiting list. Jump in. Oh, we're doing this today. Great, cool. So, first of all, thank you. Um, I you're tried welcome. to start digging through your stuff. I think um, and I shouldn't speak for. Brandon, but we're of the same mind of how we want to go market. And I've told Cody and Rose, I said, look, you know, I, I see what Nick's doing and that's what I want to emulate because I've done it the other way and it's, it's grueling. Um, I do run cold email. I haven't done it the way you've done it yet, but I've run it for a couple of clients. You know, we are running for one client about 8,000 emails a day across. So I'm, I'm, my bigger thing for you is, okay, you built your system. And I think what I have to get my hands around so far is I do have Apollo, but it's defining the market of who to go after. And and again, I know the the course you have is coming out. And I told Adam, I don't care if it has graphics or not. I want a course so I can walk through it. Uh, I have primarily gone after the home services niche. I'm not sure if that's where I want to stay or not. Home services, meaning like plumbers, electricians, contractors, things like yes. that. Yes. Okay. Correct. So not married to that. I am partnering with um, two new guys. Well, one's already been around, but the other's coming in. But they both have worked in the mid to upper market in the tech space. And I've showed them what we can do and very, very into the idea, hey, yo, this is great. You can keep doing this and we are going to run some ads. But I'm like, I think cold email could be really good. And one guy's like, yeah, I don't know. So I, I am very interested in not how to build the email system because I've got that pretty much refined. Um, um, I do know how to build it. I have a place where I buy my domains. I have a place to, in, you know, put them into instantly, big instantly fan. Um, actually using instantly itself to clean the emails right now. That seems to be going pretty well with their built in service now. Yeah, instantly also. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Brandon. Instantly also does do a good job of cleaning the meat. Yes, uh, I saw that. It's a little bit more pricey. Like yeah, plastic. it is. It's a little bit more expensive. That, that's the thing. It, yeah. it is and it's not because you can buy them. So if you like at two hundred and whatever dollars, we get a hundred thousand. But I don't have to burn that hundred thousand you know, within a, a month, right? It's like, okay, great. When that credit runs out, I'll go buy another hundred thousand. So I, I just like the flexibility of it. Plus the fact I've already got the leads, load them, clean them in instantly. And I don't have to do a multi-system move the data around. 
So it's just, you know, it never balances great. Million verifier is great. It's just, I, I have found so far that this just takes a step out of my process, which is nice law. But I am very curious of your list building. I'm using a new tool. I made friends with somebody that's building out a new service that's kind of going up against clay, but a lot easier to use than clay. And so I'm, I'm working through that. But I guess my question more than anything for you, Nick, is you, like you said, hey, I got a $5,000 deal this morning. I assume that's a payment on a deal you've already talked to somebody about and you've sent out a proposal and they're acting on that proposal. Is that a proper understanding? Yeah, exactly. It's not like an e-com sale where you've sent an email and they're going to buy. This is something where you've got a lead, you walk them through the process, and now they're closing that deal. Yeah, no, we, we went the entire process that I always go through. Very cool. And so, yeah, I'm, I need to get my hands through your course. I've already blocked time off this week to do nothing but go through everything you've done, but not just go through, but implement it as I go. So having you for the access to say, hey, this is what I've done, and you kind of help critique that, I think is going to be really helpful for all of us. But it is one of those things when we're looking at, you know, and I talked to Cody about, I was like, hey, you know, I've been marketing this way, but based on where I'm going, I may need to change some of my branding. So I just, I'm curious, you know, on that, how you position yourself on your social sites and your Facebook and everything else because I want to have a cohesive message, whether you find me on Instagram or Facebook or, or I hit you in LinkedIn, what that messaging looks like. All right. So I'm going to show you what I'm, well, first I'm going to explain. Okay. Um, I, I started this out back in about a year ago now with Adam and Brent right? and what was happening was I was following what everybody else is doing. And that is going with the own services, going and finding like plumbers, power washers, all of this. And I have 15 years of sales experience. I've never done cold calling ever in my life. Always went to the doctor's office, went to the business's office to go and speak with them, to set up a meeting. And when I got on the phone, man, that shit was super difficult. Like you have to talk to the girl that answers the phone first and she's like, no, we're not interested. And then she has the power to hang up on you. So you can't keep going. And I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. And I would see people on YouTube that have videos just like this that I'm sharing right now of like, you know, uh, this is my live sales call. He probably filmed 50 of them and recorded all of them and only took that one and said, this is my first one. I just closed, you know, five meetings because it's not easy. And so what I learned from that is those types of people have, they've been doing their business for quite some time. They, they're, it's like, if I asked you to change your toothpaste or your deodorant, you, you you go to the store and you get the same toothpaste and the same deodorant. It's just like embedded and engraved in your DNA that that's what I'm going to be. The only way that I would switch that is if like, you know, you're at like a, a VIN and they have a little booth on the side and they're handing out a goodie bag and they give you toothpaste inside the bag. You're going to take it because it's free and it's like you're just being respectful, right? They're not going to say, hey, come to my booth and and let me let me sell you this toothpaste you're like no i'm good i have my own toothpaste i'm at a fucking you know beer fest or i'm in a restaurant i don't mean to talk about toothpaste right now that's what we as cold in cold people coming in trying to call them to say hey now we also have to remember oh you've had 40 other people hit you up about the exact same thing and you went to two and they lost you five brand each so you're 10 grand in the hole. So now you have to overcome this crazy thing. And then you'll see these advertisements on you know, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, these wild guarantees. And they claim that this is my offer and this is how I made $100,000 in three months because you suck at your offer. And it's like, we guarantee you, you know, 15 new clients or you don't pay. Well, what does that do for you, Scott, as your business? You now just put all the pressure on yourself 
to get paid. So now you're working twice as hard to prove yourself to getting paid from a home construction guy, a, a power washer or whatever, who's not even going to see the value in it anyway. He just wants to get something for free. And if it works, that's great. It's like extra credit on a test. You know, like what was the name of the president's wife in 1937? I have no clue. It's not going to hurt me if I do know, but it's going to help me if I can guess it. Right. And so you've created a harder job for yourself by pulling yourself away to focus on somebody because now you have an agreement and you're trying to prove yourself and you're trying to prove to him or her that you can do this by making sure your offer works to make it repeatable. And I, I've done that and it sucks. So I took some time back, took some time off and went back and really started to think like, where are these people that have the money that are doing this, that need this? And so while we were sitting here and just typed this in, uh, and we'll let ChatGPT figure this out because I, I really don't make any decisions anymore. I just let ChatGPT do this stuff for me. So I just put, I sell custom CRM solutions. I want to prospect to find the right people. By the right people, I mean people who have money and on the first call, they have no pushback. I was thinking about home service providers, but I always have trouble talking to them. They are typically a type of person to get pushback and have excuses and they don't have money, right? They do, but that money is a direct correlation of how busy they can stay, right? And so what I mean by that is they're trading their time for their money. They're not looking at it as a, let me build the system out so the system can function for me so I can make more money because they're not used to that. They didn't go to school for that. They don't know anything we know about Go High Level. They know everything negative about Go High Level because the guy before you tried to sell it to him and he didn't know what the fuck he was doing and he was just making a commission off the you know maybe the affiliate link or trying to say that he could run um you know facebook ads for him but he didn't know anything about it he just watched a couple videos and he had this guy now has a bad taste in his mouth so i want a list of 50 industries where they actually have money to spend like five thousand a month or more um, what industries have serious money, like a medical clinic, because they are getting paid from the insurance companies. So now we want to think like, where, where can we go where people are making money, but it's not necessarily their own money, right? So where is it that they have an influx of people, right? Where are the companies that have an influx of people and not necessarily using their own money. While this is true, also, you know, where will the path of least resistance be, meaning no gatekeepers up front, say, answer the phones for instance lawyers are hard to get a hold of they are a great industry but they have executive assistants assistants that push back can you give me categories of industries that have a lot of money one idea i had was looking at linkedin this is what i showed brandon the other day linkedin and finding job posts for specific roles like an ai automation specialist because they have a budget 
for salaries. So if you need to ask me questions before you start to make this successful, please do so. This is important right here. If you guys are using ChatGPT, always, always ask it to ask you questions before you start to make it successful. Because if you don't put this, it'll just spit shit out. Now, if I don't know, maybe it's going to because I kind of explained it enough. But it's probably going to ask me a few questions that I didn't even think of. And it's going to help improve the answer. So I'm going to hit enter. Let's see what it says. Okay. To help you find industries that fit in criteria where business has spent money, minimal pushback and less likely to provide us to F50. Industries where revenue is continuous and or comes from external sources like companies, government programs, and external contracts. High ticket. Companies rarely spend 5000 a month on technology. Less resistance. No extensive gatekeepers or bureaucracy barriers up front. I mean, yeah, like medical clinics. I just closed three medical clinics last week. And one that one of the builds was ten thousand five hundred, the other one was nine thousand four hundred, and the other one was six thousand. And they already paid the ninety four hundred one. They have to get the approval for the other two from somebody else. But she texted, she emailed me and said, "Hey, can you change it from Trey's name and put my name on the contract?" So I sent that out late Friday afternoon, and I expect her to to come back from there. So. Like the, these are, are good, like pharmaceutical companies, right? Um, veterinary clinics, then here's business services, accounting, accounting is usually just a one guy thing. Maybe they have an, they, they have a, a, what's it called? Um, a, you know, executive assistance, but here's another little trick that you can use. You go to YouTube or you go to Spotify or you go to, um, what's it called? Apple music and you type in best accounting podcast. <laughs> the accounting podcast. These guys have 25,000 followers. These guys have a real business. So the accounting show. And look at their website, which is kind of funny. And look at what what they're what they're doing. I mean, send them a cold email. Hey, you guys have intercom. I think this is intercom on your website. I tested it out. How can we help with earmark? Yeah. I was listening to your podcast. Let's just see if it's AI that comes back. What, what's your email address, right? They, they're trying to collect the lead right there. You can literally take a screenshot and send this guy an email and say, Hey man, this is pretty invasive. I can help. And you know, what, what are your thoughts on using AI on your website? I see that you guys have 25,000 subscribers for your accounting podcast. And you guys have a thing talking about open AI's insanely entity structure. So you guys are familiar with AI. I mean, this is whatever, but like go through and look at this. Like it's worth taking maybe an hour to kind of just get yourself familiar with this. And then position yourself in a personal email. This doesn't even have to be cold email. Now, if you wanted to go out and now we just got podcasts, podcasts, people who have podcasts, they have money coming in from sponsors, right? And so now if you can automate and get them to work on their business and get more sponsors and position the email of like, hey, I saw that you have a few sponsors and bet that the editing the, the, all the bullshit that you got to do to just produce one show is taking you a lot of time. I checked out your website. You're not using AI. I can help build a system for you. If you'd like, 
let me know if you want me to send over some more information. And now you just go over here to be like, best rated podcast. And you get these people that have like, they're building like this has 53,000 views or just go to Google and type in best rated, best rated podcast or aviation or, or dentists or, or whatever. And here you go. The dentist money show, right? So, and go over here and go into YouTube and type in the dentist money show. And like, I don't know how many video, I want to see like, this has 24 views. I wouldn't worry about that. But like find the podcast that has whatever, whatever that was. I mean, maybe we can just find it, click on their link or find Ryan Isaac, you know, like this. And maybe they're not a good fit, right? Like, no, that's on Facebook. So, yeah, that's difficult to find. They're probably not that good, right? I mean, go to number one, probably. Or number seven. Promising. Right? 286 reviews. Okay, so these guys have something yeah they have a summit the dental like this could be large this guy is probably a dentist he, the elite practice mastermind is a members only group led by mark kester and his black belt coaches with mark's experience process-based systems he's created coaching model like no other does this have anything to do with dentists yeah he's a doctor so this guy literally I mean, this we did this in five minutes. This guy literally is has experience and process-based systems. You're speaking his language when you send him an email and say, hey, I saw you have process-based systems. You're at members of the Elite Mastermind are from all walks of the dental practice owner journey, but their goal is to move their business to the next level. They're a million-dollar practice growing five. Bro, this is exactly the type of person you want. He already has a database of people that want to grow from a million to five million with process based systems. That's exactly what Go High Level and our AI does for these people. So you can literally send him cold emails. Like, I mean, I did this live with you right here on, on this call. I, I didn't prepare for this. But this is what I'm doing, Link. I'm finding this guy, and then I would come here, and he's got 12 employees. So here's a content curator that's a part of it, right? So you come into to what's it called? To uh, what the hell is it called? Apollo, right? So you have K. You get her email. K, True Dental Success, and then you get Jonah, which his is probably just going to be Jonah, and now you pretty much have an idea that Mark's email is going to be Mark, because his name is not here, and you can set down an email to them, You and you can say, hey, I saw how amazing you have, how, how amazing this dental success institute is of growing people from 1 million to 5 million practices using process-based systems but i fail to notice that you guys are utilizing ai especially on your website would you like more information can would you mind if i send over more information to you um on how i can probably help your coaching business automate stuff like i don't know learn more right learn more read about him i would not use chat gpt to help you formulate cold emails i just wouldn't i would be yourself and you don't have to be like my like me 
right? So look, K. So now you have K. Look, K at True Dental Success. You have Brittany at True Dental Success. These are medium editors. You have Jake at. And I wouldn't worry about like the producer and the founder of the media company or like, but the project manager, I mean, Brittany, what if I could implement AI into your project management software? Okay. What if I could make your job easier by implementing AI into it? I know you already have some sort of CRM system. You might even be using go high level for all I know. This could be a go high level website. You could check that out and you could say, what is this website made with? And you could come here and you can go built with technology, type in their website, delete the who we are part, hit look up and you can see that it is built. I mean, they're using Slack, right? So now you know they're using Slack. Um, They're using WordPress. So you can tell them, hey, the AI actually will work with your WordPress and it could make your Slack communications even more uh, helpful, more more robust or more streamlined or whatever you want to say. Um, I, and, and then I would just go back to that chat GPT list and then I would go into transportation and logistics and do the same thing. Because at this point, event management companies this actually would be awesome because you know what they get corporate budgets like they're getting corporate budgets so they're definitely overcharging my company was a let's see what Hologic was a logic market my company was an 18.6 billion dollar company we used to go on trips and they would rent out uh, Universal Studios or Disney World while we would go to our meetings. And it was no nothing, no one there other than 4,000 employees who all have their own private room, who all had paid, they paid for us to go there on, a, on an airplane from all over the world. I mean, it cost probably $40 million just for us to get together. And there was definitely a management company that, charged probably maybe 300 grand just to do that what's what's ten thousand dollars a month out of one event budget for them per month for you to manage their ai and they have all these people come through <clears throat> right so you got to think where's the money at Where where's the money at let's not try to convince People, it's the same way I told you how I got you guys into this call today. I'm I'm not selling you anything. You're asking me questions. If I have something to sell you, you're going to want to buy it. You said, I can't wait to take your course, Nick. If I told you it's $97, you'd have no problem spending $97. If I said it was $297, you'd probably have no like pushback on that. I don't know if I'm going to sell it, but like I, I'm just saying in general is like, you, you want that because I've positioned myself as a consultant, not a salesperson, although I do, I am selling these guys stuff. Like this guy, I sold him $5,000 to use my AI, but I did it in a way where he's like, yeah, that, that would help because then I get my pain points. So let's say we do. Let, let's take, let's take this for example, let's go here, <laughs> let's do, okay, cool. I found a guy from a podcast that you helped me find. Can you give me a, and you want to break this down in steps. So can you give me a description and overview that is very detailed about this company and just paste the website
And why I'm saying 2000 words is I want it to know that I want it to have a very deep understanding for the next questions that I'm going to ask it. <coughs> See, the key service is an offering. So it just searched the website and it put all this stuff together. While it's doing that, I'm going to put in, okay, cool. Can you give me 25 pain points of this business on how I could help by consultatively selling, consultatively selling, uh, custom CRM solutions, but well, they might already be using a CRM. So I want to position it to where we could implement AI into their current workflow, something they probably aren't doing i want you to tie this back to their business and utilize what i have to offer in a position of fixing an unknown problem while not causing any more work or taking away time from their employees. A solution-based approach in a consultative manner. I also want you to pick the top three in the list and explain why they are the best. So I always make it more difficult and get more information. So now, since I told it, basically, give me 2,000 words, it went through and it took all this. Then, lead nurturing gaps, time-consuming onboarding processes. I, know, I, didn't, I mean, these are things I didn't think about. So now, <clears throat> you, it, th this is now, this now works for podcasters right that are coaches that this is like coaches because this guy i think is really a coach he just happens to be inside a dental network right so now you have okay inconsistent follow-ups overwhelmed support teams task delegation lead qualification right so now the three top three lead qualification and nurture why it's a priority they likely receive leads from various sources, webinars, podcasts, and events, but identifying which leads are hot, warm, or cold is time-consuming and often subjective. AI can automatically qualify these leads. So you can put in there, assume, you can assume when you write your email. I assume you're getting webinars, you're getting leads. So when you start assuming and, and you you do that in a in a open fashion, like a kind of a a passive, like, ah, I bet you're getting that, but you kind of downplay it. They're going to come back because it's their baby and they're going to be like, yeah, we do actually get it from webinars, but you missed one. Okay, cool, bro. That's what I would, that's the reason why I wrote it in that way. I want you to respond. So you can kind of, do you know what I mean? Like you say, you kind of play it down. Like, yeah, you probably get, you know, I don't know, leads from sources like a webinar maybe your podcast, but I couldn't see how many followers you have on your podcast. So I don't know if that's, if that's where you're getting the majority of your leads or maybe events. I don't really know where you're getting your leads from. If you play that podcast down and he has a hundred thousand subscribers, he's going to get like an emotion behind that and be like, yeah, dude, we have over a hundred thousand. It's taken me six years to build this. We work with big companies. Cool. How many leads are you getting from that? Now he, if he is getting leads, you take it to the next step, right? So he might say, yeah, we have 100,000. The next email would be, cool, 
how are you, how many leads do you get from that hundred thousand? Like, and, and what, what issues do you have or something? And he might come back and he might realize, well, we're not really getting that many leads from it. Okay. So that's a problem. So where, where are you sending these people to? So now you're getting him to start to see the problems that he doesn't know that he has. Right. So now if he says, no, we get a ton of leads. Yeah, we get a ton of leads. Cool. The next question is how many of those leads are you closing? And is that turning into dollars for you? And if he doesn't have a number for that, and if he does have a number for that, you go the next way. Okay. So you're closing 10 out of a hundred. Why are you not closing 20 out of a hundred? Because you're like, just keep going the next step up until he tells you that he has a problem, right? <laughs> so you always ask questions back, but you kind of like, like act confused. Ah, okay. So you, you, like, what does a lot look like to you? I mean, if you're getting a hundred leads every podcast, a lot, what does that sound like for you? Like, what, what does that mean in dollars for you? A lot of you're only closing three people and they're paying you and, and he might think it's $20,000. Maybe what he's selling is $20,000 because these are dentists and you know, they have, they have $20,000 to grow their business from a million to five million is what I'm assuming. It's not, you know, if I was a dentist and I want to go from a million to, to 10 million, I think that if I found the right guy, I would pay 20 grand that had a system in place to, to sell me that. So if he responds and he says, you know, well, good. I mean, we're closing three out of a hundred. We have a 3% close rate. Cool. Why have you not been able to close the other ones? Now flip it. Right. And he would be able, and then he would say, ah, well, they don't qualify. Okay. H how are you qualifying these people? Well, we have them fill out a form. Okay. What's the follow-up like on that form? Well, we just send out an email. Okay. How do you know those people read the email? Right. And you just keep digging into it until he says like, so you get to the point where it's like, all right, you and I both would agree. There's still room to get an extra 20,000 from one more person out of a hundred. If you're only closing three, right. And he'd be like, well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, that would be ideal. Okay. But you're just not doing that. So that's where I was trying to get at. I might be able to help, but I don't know exactly. And then you just go into the project scope document. Cool. I can help you with this, but what we need to do is figure out the customer journey. And then you go through that whole entire process that I've been telling you guys for the past couple of weeks. And you don't deviate from that because the second that you, he starts asking, you, you got to let them work the way that you work. Cause if he starts to take control of the, of the, uh, Call, I'll come back to that chat GPT thing and I'll share this with you. So you have this chat so you can, you can get it, but if you allow the person to take control of that call, then now he's in control and you're going to lose the sale. And the sale is not to sell them go high level just yet. The sale is to the, the call to action is to get him on a meeting and pay $150, $250 to only get the project scope document and that project scope document is going to further enhance his gap between, Oh, we're only getting three the systems that Nick or Scott or Brandon or Edney, uh, Andy, uh, just showed me. Now you get them to a point of like, hmm, maybe I am missing something and it only cost me 200 bucks to figure this out. I never sat down and did this. This guy knows what he's fucking talking about. Yeah. Let's, let's see. Okay, cool. Send it off to Adam and Brendan. You send off the, the proposal. The proposal gets done. You come back and you remember the conversation that you had with him. And you're like, dude, man. all right. So you're getting a new lead from your podcast. We're going to have the AI go out and qualify them with five qualifying questions that you're going to come up with. Cool. 
and and you just go through that and you're like for all of this it's eight thousand dollars you think with one extra you're going to get twenty thousand dollars in in sales they think about this i just do you know times three eight thousand dollars is is nothing and that's how my conversations go because i'm i'm getting people just like this and so they're they're um they are hanging up the phone and they're like yeah like i'm in send me the send me the the invoice go ahead Scott. love your process a couple questions <clears throat> when you're going back and forth and you're having this dialogue i assume that dialogue is going back and forth either in a chat or in email to you get them to that point correct um, meaning like, Hey, you know, have you thought about this? And no, we haven't. Now, where is your transition from sitting in an email system to, you know, you're, you're talking about answering these questions or are these going back and forth in email over time? And they're just, that's part of the sales cycle. It's always scheduling the next, the next conversation is scheduling a call. So the first one is schedule a five to 10 minute call with me to qualify you. Right. So that's that five to 10 minute call. Sometimes it may be 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, 20 minutes. It depends on what we talk about, right? Sometimes it's like, yeah, what's up? You live in Mexico. That's cool. You know, how's like, what made you move there? And that takes me five minutes to talk about. And then I explain and, you know, hey, okay. Look, so tell me a little bit about your business. You you have this dental podcast. You're raised in a bunch of money for uh, people to dentists to move from a million dollars to $5 million. What's that process like for you? And then he just like ask an open ended question. What's that process like for you? Because naturally they're going to start to think and they're just going to tell you a little problem. You know, we're, we've been doing really well for the past like four years. It's been really, really good. Um, what we're trying to work on is this. Okay, cool. How are you, how are you actively working on that with everything else that you've been doing? Like, how are you shifting from that? And, and then and then they get into a problem that they didn't even know they were going to tell me, right? So they go through that. After that 10 or 15 minute conversation, saying, look, that's cool. So what I do is I actually can help you get out of working on your business or get out of working in your business and start working on your business, pretty much how you just described it. But the only way that it really happens, it, it sounds to me like you have every single thing in your head and it, it might be documented, but it's not documented in a workflow or a pipeline uh, manner. And in order for me to do my job to see if I can help you is we got to sit down 45 minutes. I'll walk you through step by step the process of from the time that you have someone engage your business to the time that they pay you money. I'll fix all the bullshit in between. I can automate most of it, if not all of it, depending on the systems that you're using. You probably use something like Zapier. You know, you have WordPress. You might use something called Go High Level or some sort of HubSpot CRM system. And you have your Calendly and you have your Stripe and your PayPal and your Venmo. And you have all these systems that need to communicate just to send off to your accountant and blah, blah, blah. It's all in your head. It's not, I, I know based on what I'm talking to you about. So what I suggest, if you want to move forward with this, is I charge 150 bucks. I charge 250 bucks to sit down. I'm going to build out this organized document for you. It's going to take me and my team a few days, and it's going to do two things for you. It's going to allow you to take this, look at it, hire somebody internally that can build all this out yourself, or you can hire my team that we can do this all for you. And we also will include AI into it. If you want, I can shoot over the payment link and we can go from there. And there's only two options. It's either yes or it's no. If he tells me I need to think about it, this is what I would say. Cool. I understand you need to think about it. I have a lot of clients that I work with and I don't know if I would be available for you other than sending you my calendar. But I will tell you one thing. I'm not going to follow up with you. Because if you're not willing to pay 250 bucks to, to, to have this document and then make a decision of whether or not you want to build it, then I don't think this is right for you. And that's fine. And, and at that point, 
It's like when you're a kid and your girlfriend's like, I don't think we should be together. But you complain to your friends for two months. I fucking hate her. I don't want to be with her anymore. And then she pulls it away. It's like, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? And so now at that point, if they say no after you've been extremely blunt and straight up with them, like, if you're not willing to pay 150, 250 bucks on this, then I don't think it's going to work out. And that's okay. You just saved yourself a ton of unnecessary bullshit time that you don't want to deal with anyway. Now, I'm in this example, I'm going to talk about, yes, they, they, um, what's called, they did show up, right? So they did show up, they paid, right? So now they pay. You can send a text, you can send an email and be like, hey, look, uh, here's the calendar link, schedule your time, whatever. Get them on the call. You get them on the call. You go through that entire document. They're locked in. They paid for that document. So the follow-up is, hey, bro, your document's ready. Click this link. Like, they paid for it. So they want to see what you have, right? So it's not like, a, hey, I'm just following up to see if you're around to get on another call. It's like, hey, the document that you signed, that you paid for, is ready Here's my calendar. Let's get on a call. You get on that call and you go through. <clears throat> Let me pull it up so that we can see it. <laughs> Excuse me. My drive. Nick, while you're pulling that up and you're working through this part, did you work out the part of how to present the Y'all, the licensing, the continual licensing fee yeah. after the build is done. Because I know that was a kind of a sticking point of, of something you were working through. And I figured by this time, you probably figured out how to manage that. Yeah, I'm going to show you one. Okay, cool. That that was something I was running through my brain of how do you attack that question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of this person's name. What is his name? It's even Here it is. It doesn't have it. The thing is, once I put it in, who did I send this to the other day? So, yeah, what I call it is the um, AI engine. That's a Raul uh, helper. He came up with that the other day. I don't know where we were, but. Man, you know what it is? It's in my, it's in my, here, it's in my, uh, go high level account, not me, not my, um, what's it called? Google Drive. So like, my, this one. So what I do is I come through. And I go through and yeah, that's it. So I go through and I say, look, this, this, this is what they paid for. This guy's name is Austin. Austin went to man. Look, I know we spoke the other day. You paid, this is the document that you paid for. I'm going to send this after this call. And I'm also going to explain to you, uh, if we decide to work together, what the cost of this, but ultimately you get to make that decision because now you have the full entire uh, structured document on how you could either go hire somebody else or you could work with us. Um, I will tell you that this document is going to turn into something a lot more detailed uh, when working with us because we, if we had 10 swings to cut down a tree, we're going to sharpen it nine times before we, before we, we build anything. And so this is the same type of company. We did this for a financial institution. This turned out, this is actually not the entire document. This is a 300 page document. Obviously there's a lot more sophisticated, but we go through and we take the time to really learn your business. It doesn't take any extra time for you out of your day. You're going to meet with my project manager. You're going to meet with myself. 
we're going to have a couple of calls to go through and just make sure that we're all dialed in and we're all on the same page from the time that you have a new lead, a current lead. I mean, this one, they're uploading documents, they're doing bank information, they're, they're doing all kinds of stuff. Yours is not going to be really this sophisticated because you just have, you know, from the point of lead to the point of sale, these are financial institutions. They have to follow bullshit rules and stuff with the SEC and whatever. And so I set the expectation up front in the beginning of the call so that I can sit there and go through and say, look, based on what we talked about the other day, the outcome is we want to develop an automated and efficient client onboarding system within something called Go High Level that you are already familiar with. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a custom client intake form that integrates with Go High Level. It's going to collect the relevant client details. It's going to, you know, like your lead sources, your their business information, their goals. We're going to create workflows that automatically nurture the leads with SMS. We're going to also use AI to do that so that you don't have to handle all of this and waste your time but not hinder the amount of money that you're going to make and just streamline your processes. The goals are we're going to implement this automation to follow up with the leads based on engagement. We're going to build drip campaigns that trigger the SMS so that when they don't respond within specific timeframes, they're getting re-engaged and setting up meetings with you. Um, this is automate and lead nurturing. We're going to create a lead management pipeline so that you and your team can manage everything like you told me the other day inside your Go High Level account. It's all fucked up and you want to have a streamlined process. So, you know, new lead, booked call, no show, and then you're going to have your nurture campaign for the people that basically haven't told you to screw off yet, but they also haven't unsubscribed and maybe they become a client later on down the road, but the timing must be off and they haven't had a meeting with you. Like this is exactly how fast I do it. And, and this is me talking to you, trying to sell this. So the other thing is, look, man, I told you that you told me that you have a phone system called wave and I took a look at it. Um, and it looks like we can get this to, to work pretty seamlessly. We do have to build out some automations inside it. But I mean, from what they have, if you're already using this, we can totally integrate this. I, I looked at it. It's totally embedded. It, you're, you're telling me that it is increasing your conversions, but we're going to get our custom system to work with that. So you don't have to change anything. And my developers will get on a call with you. And if, if anything comes up, they can reach out and, and speak with uh, the support there to get the necessary information for that API connection. Um, so here's how it works. This is what we talked about the other day. They first come in, they are a new lead. The reason why we put no show here is because we always want people to be moving in a linear line across from left to right. The further right they get, the more close they are, the closer they are to paying you. So if they're not moving to the right, they're moving back. And so no show is put before book to call because the first thing the new lead is going to book the call. And then they're going to show up. But if they didn't show up, they're going to go back because they have to rebook the call. I know it looks confusing, but when you see it in a linear line, it's super organized so that your team can stay organized. And so your team is going to be hanging out in the showed up and application submitted section. So after they show up, you know, you guys are having them on the call. This is your sales call. You're having them uh, apply for the insurance or whatever it is. Now, if there's two, there's, there's two forks in the road, right? They got a quote, but they didn't get a sale or they did and they closed it. And now it's going to go to underwriting. This is a wait stage is what you told me. And once the policy is issued, you have nothing to do with it anymore other than nurture. And I'll get to the nurture in a second. So each one of these has a workflow underneath it. Um, we're going to have to build out, you know, the lead intake form to put on your website. We're going to have to put out the, the calendar for the booking, the call, the application form. You told me that this is done internally on the insurances website. So we're not going to build that. We put this here so that we know that this is what you're going to be doing. And then a feedback form with radio buttons to decide to let your team know did the person show up or did they not show up or did this application get submitted? And again, there's a 30,000 foot approach. This could change again in 
going to change into a more detailed doc document. So if you have questions, feel free to ask me, but I just know that this is like a 30,000 foot approach over the next week when we get started, this is going to turn into like more of like a 20 foot approach, right? So do you have any questions about the pipeline? Does that pipeline look good? Yeah, because that's what we spoke about. I mean, we spent 45 minutes before this time to make sure that we went through that. Then, you know, um, okay, great. So now we go through all of the workflows. So the workflows, look, 001 is new lead. I'm going to skip 002 because I'm going to show you how it works. But what you, so the trigger is they filled out a form, they answered a Facebook ad, they did whatever. We can add more here later if we need to. Um, what needs to happen? It needs to go into wave in high level that starts to auto dial them. So then you have three different options, right? Another fork in the road. We either move to 003 because they booked a call and you send out an email with a radio button that what needs to happen next, or they didn't answer the phone or they get a missed call text back because they might call you from that phone number and the AI is going to go out and communicate with them to set up a call. So the AI is going to text them. We're going to email them and then we'll set the times. Obviously we're not going to call people at three in the morning. And I just go through all of this. And I mean, I, I don't necessarily need to go through all that, but that's me selling. It's not me trying to convince them. It's me selling to them exactly what they paid for. They paid for this, but I'm positioning it in a way of work with us because we're super organized. The second that I show them this document, every single time, because these people that are on the calls know that they, they paid 250 bucks or 150 bucks. They see the value in this. And the second that I show them this, they're like, wow, wow, this is pretty organized. Yeah, I definitely don't have this. This is what I need. And, and now their whole guard is down. And again, I am the consultant and I'm telling them what I, I'm, I built them what they asked me to build. And then I go through all of this. And I say, okay, look, what's going to happen is we're going to spend a week and we're going to go through and gather all the required stuff to make that 20 foot approach. It's not going to take a week, dude. I'm not trying to pull away from your time, but you know, we might have to get on two zoom meetings and it might be 45 minutes each, but they're going to be based on your schedule. So I put a week here just to give us some cushion. It's probably going to be maybe two 45 minute sessions at most. It's going to take us four weeks to build all this out. Then we're going to do alpha testing. Me, you, Brendan, Adam, Jarrell, whoever, all of our project managers, we're going to make fake accounts. We're going to go to the website. We're going to, we're going to register. We're going to try to break it and we're going to test it. And then once all that is good, great, grand, wonderful, then we're going to launch it and we're going to actually put this in and we're going to monitor it on the back, on the back end. And we're going to also give you support during all of this time. The price is 7,500 bucks. You wanted a website. If you don't want the website, it's 6,500. It's, it's uh 5,500. But, and then he said, yeah, I want the website. So I said, okay, so it's 7,500. And I said, and on top of that, it's 197 a month for the AI engine to be running. That's it. And he's like, all right. I said, so let me, then this actually said 5,500. And I said, let me know if you want the website added or not. Um, we can do it at a separate time or we can do it all together. And he was like, no, dude, I need the website. I just want to do everything all at once. 7,500 bucks, send it to me. I'm busy this week, but I'll sign this because I need to get this going and wave and all of this operating. And I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. I'm like, all right. So this week i mean he texted me the other day and said hey bro i'm ready to uh to do this can you send me the paperwork he's opened the email you know five times but he did he told me he was busy so and and that's it go ahead scott i, I think your i think your process is is spot on i love this document I, the only question i have oh you want me to share it again 
No, it, I don't need. I, I. So my only question, and, and maybe I'm off here. Why are you selling the AI agent so cheap? I usually sell it for two ninety seven, but it depends on the it depends on the the industry, right? Like this, okay. guy, this guy is a one man shop insurance agent. Okay. So I'm not gonna be greedy. The one ninety seven, two hundred bucks. I, I'll, I'll take that. I'm not gonna tell him it's eight hundred bucks. Where eight hundred bucks for a one man show? And like, dude, that's that's a lot, dude. You know, I gotta sell twenty five. I don't know. I don't know how many he's got to sell. I got to sell 20, 20 policies just to cover that because some of these guys only make a commission on their, what's it called? On their, um, on just the first month. They don't make it reoccurring every single month. Um, and then, so like one guy I have for seven ninety nine dollars a month. Um, and then the other ones, like I have, uh, a financial institution, they'll do three ninety seven a month. They're new. They're just starting out. It's a, uh, a friend of mine. It's a, his father. Um, and so I, I kind of pick and choose really. Um, I mean, yeah, because I've been in positions where they're like six ninety seven a month and, and I've lost the deal just because of that. But then the second that I go and I lower it, they're like, well, if you lower that, can you lower the other price? And so like, right. I don't want to go too high on that. If I get 20 clients paying 200 bucks a month, that's four grand a month for me for doing nothing anymore. And it's not going to go away because they're using it in their business. So that's like, for me, four grand for almost like, I, I, I don't know, I haven't been doing this that long, but at least a year. So in your agreement, when you're setting that up, I assume you are, once you deliver this, making it very clear what's in scope and out of scope from that move forward point. This is the agreement. I, this is it. Meaning they come back and say, hey, we want to edit the AI or we want to do whatever. I go back and I redo the entire process. I thought we would charge them 150 bucks to do the thing, but I would go back. And I would do that. And the reason being is because there's no mistake for myself to be in communication with Adam and Brendan. There's no room for mistakes. That's that's the process. That's the flow. If they want something new, okay, this is it. Now, if they want something updated, Adam and Brendan, we have the ticketing system. So mm -hmm. use, I don't know what it's called. I think it's fresh disk. Um, my cousin is actually building that out for for them right now. Cool. That that should be up and running. Now, I don't know when it's going to be up and running, but um, if they need little help like that, then they just fill out a ticket. Okay. And and but if they want like okay, I want to do landing page. Okay. What, what that, that's what I meant by in scope and out of scope. So they understand once you've delivered this product, other than the the standard running of it significant updates or changes is out of scope and will require another document and project scope. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm, again, I think this model is outstanding. I um, need to get my hands around all the working pieces of that. And that's my goal this week is to do that. Are you incorporating any of this or thoughts of incorporating the voice AI and what your pricing might look like when you do that? Yeah. The thing is, I'm just not going to pay for it. I'm going to have a client pay for it. So I'll sell it before I buy it. And I met talks with Jarrell and Adam and Brendan of like, which one should we buy? Thinker. There's another one called like agent centric dot AI or something. And then there's another one called like my genius. Me and Jarrell were on a call with one of the companies. Um, but I'll get to that when I get to it. That I think that'll be an upsell here. Like it's one ninety seven a month, but if you want the voice AI, now it's six ninety seven plus the minutes. Plus, um, okay. But that, that answers my question. Thank you, yeah, because I'm I I think that I'm already got people looking at Thinker and very happy with where it is. So I was just curious what you were looking at in that realm. But I 
your process is outstanding. I've just got to get my brain up from, hey, you know, I, I, I match exactly what you talk. Came in, do home services. Great, we're doing home services, getting our heads beat in, not with a good product, but getting to the person we want to talk to. You know, it's like you, you get shut down before you can even talk to the person you want unless you're running ads and bringing it in bound. I'm like, that's fine. We can do that part. But I like the idea of, again, how are you using Apollo? building the right list of people that are at a higher level. And, I, and I'm, I need to go through your course and go back through some of the things we've talked about, about, you know, I, I want to see how you just built that, that Chad GPT, but not so much how much volume can I do? How many quality people can I get to, to talk to using this method versus the other and cold email is a great way to do it. Cause you can ramp it up. So it looks yeah, like I, I would categorize. So with the cold email, I would categorize things like go and look for podcasters. Most podcasters have some sort of coaching program. I mean, look at Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey has his, uh, you know, his money. I forget what he calls it, but everybody follows the Dave Ramsey model. Is like listen to my podcast, listen to my radio show, download this lead magnet, and then join our exclusive group of people. Right, it's the same thing for a dentist that I just showed you, and it'll be the same thing for an accounting group. Like they'll have, you know, join our group and we'll be your accountant. Right? I mean, do a coaching thing, but they're probably going to say, okay, we can structure your paperwork correctly. If you're out of the country, you'll have a, you know, um, your you, because this is what my accountant does, is you get your F E I E. Uh, qualification will help you get your residency. We'll have you'll have an, an offshore uh, holding company and an LLC in Wyoming because extra information, not in Florida. And then you know my ID is in Florida uh, for tax purposes. While I live in Mexico, I have nothing to do with Florida, but that's where my residence is for tax purposes. So that right there, I pay like a thousand dollars to be told exactly what I need to do. So that's the upsell for the accountant, the same way that the the, the, the uh, dentist guy is going to teach you go to build your dentist practice from a million to five million like he has on his website, the same way that, you know, uh, uh, a, a cake maker has a podcast, a bakery, you know, like, it's like, download these recipes, join my group, you get X amount, you get more recipes for this, and... I teach you how to turn your bakery into a well-known, popular family name in your township. I mean, you get that out, but I mean, that's what every single one of them does. So the email is categorized. Hey, saw you are a coach at blah. You have a podcast. I'm sure that you're getting leads from webinar, make it broad, webinars, um, events, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm sure that, you know, there's time where leads are slipping through the cracks. You're probably using a CRM system like HubSpot or OI Level or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, what I do is I help you pick up low hanging fruit that's slipping through the cracks because most of the time, everyone that I've worked with and my team has worked with, they don't have the proper systems to engage and qualify and follow up. And we do this by utilizing chat GPT inside your CRM system. Right. And so when you say inside their, your CRM system, they automatically, there's two things that happens. There's one that they think, wow, I don't have a CRM system. Maybe I should speak to him or two. I have a CRM system, but I'm not going to change but he's saying that it will implement into my CRM system. So I don't, it sounds like I don't have to do anything. And so now you're hitting both of those two, you know, prospects like, like without, um, that's your offer, right? It's your scary offer is what Raul and, and, and Cody would call it, but you're not really offering anything. You're just trying to get a meeting set up. And then in that meeting, that meeting, that five to 10 qualifying meeting is you're not selling anything about go high level. You're selling a $150 document. That's it. And then when you present that $150 document, now you're selling that $7,500 bill. 
but you're giving them the option to choose. Once they have the choosing side, they realize that you're no longer a salesperson. You are nothing but a team player on my in my business that's helping me achieve what I want to achieve. And I think paying 7500 bucks to have you help me is pretty good. And Brandon said this the other day, I think last night in a text, he was like, well, bro, I'm thinking about making out these packages to be like 5000 for this and $900 a month or $700 a month. You can still do that. Just go through this framework to where you're not trying to sell them a $5,000 thing for $600 a month, right? You are positioning it through, this is almost like marketing and sales put together is a five to 10 minute phone call, $150 document, a presentation on what they're gonna get, and now they're buying whatever it is that you wanna get, whatever you wanna sell them. So for Brandon, if he wants to do $5,000 setup, $900 thing, your document, your detailed scope is going to be whatever you want to include in it, but you're going to position it to the business and make it seem as if this is custom made just for you. And so at that point, it's still the same. You're just going to go in and change a couple things, Brandon, but you're positioning yourself as this is my process. This is how I do it. And so when they start to see how organized you are and how serious you are about this, no one else in this go high level world is doing it. I'm not, I'm not gonna say no one. There's people out there that are doing it, but the majority of people are not staying or not selling the organizational structure behind it because that speaks volumes without you knowing it. And that helps you close the sale because now they feel comfortable. Like, damn, these guys got their shit together. This is uh, this is pretty. I've never actually seen this. No, no one's ever shown me this. I, I like, I like it. I get that a hundred percent of the time. Every single time I show them a detailed scope. The other day, I got up in the middle of a phone call because I was like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna grab water." I just did that on purpose to see if because him and his partner were on the Zoom call. And I stood up and I stood behind the camera and uh, well, I went and got water too, but I stood behind the camera and they had their own little conversation and they were like, dude, I've never seen this before. This is awesome. This is exactly what we need. This would do this for Sean. And if we can get all the leads to be sent out with AI and then all Sean had to do. And then the other guy was like, yeah, man, that's why I took this meeting. I think this could really grow our business. And then I came right back and I was like, yeah, it's definitely going to grow your business guys. That's what I do. Love. I have a question. All right, let's let Andy go real quick because his hand was up first, and then um, Kate, I'll, I'll come to you. Hey Nick, uh, thank you very much for sharing. It was really insightful, and I love um, all the examples that you gave from the um, from how to, um, you know, the like the call email and and all the way about how you actually walk through to the client. So um, the question that I have. Is that um, you know just imagine when you were working with a one man show insurance agency and and uh, I think you were like offering for a pretty low rate for one hundred ninety seven dollars per month, right? And my question is like, how would you frame that discussions um, not just to him but just to any kind of, of the prospect and to make sure that they understand what are the examples of like this uh, small change, you know? That you say that they can just submit a ticket or something that you can do do for them, or what, how how can you also explain to them what are the some of the things like you say like building a website or making uh, making some big changes that would actually cost them money, and and also and related questions are these, is that um, do you have any plans on also offering them as um, as an add-ons for the support? But is one hundred ninety-seven dollars that you operate to him? Would that including some minor support too, or would it just be the licensing for them to use your solutions? So these are my questions. Okay. Yeah. So I don't. I don't. 
try I, and and I th this I don't know how to answer this. This is this process. I don't get to that situation. I don't get to that conversation until I present them the price. So the 197 or the 297 or none of that, any of the prices do not come up until they have completed and they have paid me $150 or $250 to make this, this thing. So my first goal is I need people on my calendar to just take a five to 10 minute phone call. When they ask me for the price before I present that uh, $7,500 price for the 297 a month AI engine, I tell them, listen, I have no idea what it's gonna cost. And if anyone is telling you how much they can build this for without giving you a document like this, I'd be very weary of that because they're just making shit up. How could anybody tell you what the price is? If I go to Best Buy, and I buy a TV, I bought it for $497. Best Buy and LG or JVC, they know how much it costs to ship it from China, how much the gas is gonna cost, how much they paid for all their drivers, how much they paid for all their overhead inside the business, and they know that for $497, they're gonna make a $32 profit after everything is said and done. But they have that, they have that information but they can't go out and sell that TV without knowing that because, I mean, you, you wouldn't have a business, right? And so I have overhead and I have the people that I need to pay. So each one of these, I don't know how many forms you need because that takes man hours. I don't know how many surveys you need. That takes man hours. I don't know how much coding you need or API integrations you need. That takes man hours and skill with experience and that cost me more. So in order for me to, I don't know why it does that, but in order for me to give you a price and for anybody to build this properly, we all, you and I, Mr. Client, we have to be on the same page. So that's why I charge 250 bucks. And if it really is that big of a deal, Andy, then if we decide to work together, I'll shave off that 250. But the reason I charge 250 is because it costs me my time. I have to sit down for four to five hours, go through this video that we're we're recording right now, go out, send it to my team, have them look it over, and then bring it back to you. And I can't if I did that for everybody, man, I I, I wouldn't have any time to 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 build all this stuff out for everybody. And no, go ahead. Yeah, let's share something real quick. Um, actually, in my uh, previous L, what. Uh, work position, nothing specifically related related to this marketing stuff. Uh, I but I was a customer success manager, so I had a client before. They said, "Hey, Andy, like, you know, why are you like, you know, asking me for all these like uh, small fees and like, you know, like, like the for the half that to prepare for the proposal? Hey, man, come on, Andy, and you know, like, uh, this deal is big. You know, it could be in." in the magnitude of like 10,000 or right? I, I won't tell the numbers exactly, but it's like 10,000 to potentially up to 100,000 kind of range. And he told me that that for like you're doing a big business, you know, no one is, no one is charging for those uh, RFP or the request for proposals. So for, I'm disagreeing with you, Andy, like, you know, you're not thinking big. So I kind of have those kind of the things. Well, the, well, the, the client, the client has no idea that this is the proposal. That's the point. You're you're just giving them a proposal. Mm -hmm. it, they don't need to know that this is the proposal. This is their working document. So they're buying something that if they don't decide that they're going to work with you, they can take exactly what you've put together and go and hire somebody else. Give them that choice. Look, if you don't want to work with me because it costs 7500 Go and go and hire somebody else. Now you have everything. I, I I did the job that you hired me to do because you positioned it that way. And that does two things. If you are working at that other company, you're telling them, hey, I'm going to charge you for this proposal. I wouldn't fucking pay for a proposal ever. 
But if I didn't know it was a proposal and I was positioned that this is a document that I can take away and go find somebody else to build it, and this is my entire business on paper, that's more valuable to me than a proposal for sure. But they don't need to know that. I would never tell them, hey, I'm going to put together a proposal for you and you're going to pay me 250 bucks. They'd be like, absolutely not. Why would I pay for a proposal? No, I, I'm not positioning it that way. And I'm, I'm also positioning it in an easy way that me, Adam, Brendan, and our team can work on this so that, so that it can be streamlined and scalable. Because if I were to do all of this myself, I would have had one client. I have like 10 with maybe four or five outstanding right now. There is no possible way that if I did not work in this fashion with Adam and Brandon and our team to build this out, would I be able to scale this? I would still be stuck on the one $11 build and be in every single Zoom call every single day asking questions and not have a life. And so... Don't ever tell them that you're going to put together a proposal and sell it for 150 bucks. And don't get caught up in the weed of why do I have to pay $197 a month? Bro, do you have a cell phone? You bought a cell phone for $1,000 at from the Apple store. You pay $65 a month to use Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T. I'm Verizon. I'm T-Mobile. I'm AT&T. You're using my software. It's $197. If not, go and find Zappy Chat. Go and get Many Chat. There's other ones out there, but they will not do what we've discussed here the way that you want it to happen. But if you don't want to do that, that's no problem. Now, if you want support, that's an extra $250 for $20 for 20 hours a month. And I'm just going to give that to Dia. Dia will, will handle that. And I don't need to necessarily make any money off that. It's not, I mean, maybe I just buy hours from Dia and I charge them and, and I can use it collectively. And then I just buy more hours from her. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't gone to that point because everything is so organized. What are they going to need support on? We've already done our due diligence and we're both on the same page. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, usually those um, support hours are usually right at the beginning of the get go when they were just kind of like getting used to the system, right? I think. I would anticipate that support hours by efforts will be significantly less after the initial ramp, ramping in of the user. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks, Nick. I appreciate you. You're welcome, man. All right, Katie, you and then King Wat Wat. Okay, so the first question I'm going to ask, and I understand you say no, but could you share that one document later? Um, because when you're writing the scope of work, this is kind of some of the languages and some of the pieces of the puzzle is new to me because I come from a marketing background. So yeah. I understand, you know, I, in marketing, sometimes you do phase one, phase two. It takes a lot of hours to break down how their campaigns are going to run. So I'm very comfortable with what you're saying about charging them for that because I've had situations in marketing where I've done very detailed things. They've not gone with me and they've gone with someone that charges less. Um, and they've used my scope of work plan because it was very detailed. Um, I just don't know how to put it together because I'm kind of new to all this area of, of things. Um, oh, wait, yeah, and not only that, they used your scope of work, but they also wasted your time. Oh yeah, yeah. They, I did one where I, yeah. And when you're in blogging, I, I don't know if you know this about me. I was an influencer. Well, I am now still, but I was one of the original ones, right? And you would have to pitch a company, and you'd pitch this whole campaign idea. And it was we did this for a while, but then a lot of us older ones got hip to it, and we're like, we're not, um, we didn't charge them but we would make them sign disclosure saying that if they don't go with our pitch ideals that they weren't going to use them or they'd be liable to a lawsuit. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's it, for big companies. I don't think I would take somebody to a small claims court for using it. But oh, yeah. No, no, they, no, no. They purchased it, right? But yeah, yeah. I, get, I get what you mean. Yeah. So I understand what you're doing. I just don't know how to 
put it all together. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So are you in the um the partnership program with us with Raul, Cody, uh um Adam and, and Brendan? No, I'm not there yet. Okay. I don't uh, that to you. What happens is I mean, you can put this together yourself, yeah, but I, personally, I don't. I don't put this together. Actually, Adam and Brendan, the team does. The project managers do. So I send this off. To, I send this off to them. They watch the recorded video and they build it for me. That's their job. That's, oh, that's that, I don't, awesome. I don't, I don't. I don't do this. So I suggest look. Look at. I mean, if you have leads coming in and you have business coming in, I would join the partnership program. It's oh man, it's a thousand percent worth it for sure. Um, but what I'll do is I'm going to, uh, so every Sunday when we have these calls, I'll take this video and I'll put this on YouTube and I'll put all the documents, even like the, the link directly to the chat GPT thing that I put in there for you in, in the description so that you can always have a reference to go back and, and look at it. Um, but I, I can, yeah, I'll include one of these in there for you. So no okay. Thank you. And yes, I do plan on joining that. I'm just. I, right now, I'm still just working my own thing. Like, I did get a client, but it's a smaller client, you know? Of course. The other thing is, I do ask, if you do join, use my affiliate link so that I, I these days on Sundays, I can get some sort of compensation over time. You know I you know I got I, you. I, it I, was already I, planned. Ernie, Ernie. So, I yeah, no, I... Out. I'm yeah I can help you I'll, I'll share this after this call I'm gonna go play golf because I have not had a day off since my sister's wedding and that's like September 15th so mm -hmm. I need to like go do something and it's not raining right now we, we've had like hurricanes all week and now it's sunny outside enjoy the sun so all right King Wadwat, your name, your real name is Jeffrey, right, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, that's my little moniker name. It's it's, it's all good. It's uh, cool. My question, man, is, yeah, I'm just I'm a little bit like unfocused. I'm all I'm all over the place, but uh, uh, you know, Raul explaining the whole voice AI, getting on that to Adam's uh, AI chat. Um, and being in that program now, I can't really afford to be in a partnership program right now. Cause I'm, I'm like just stuck in the weeds of everything. Well, you're, you're in the private group with us, right? Right. I'm affiliated. Yeah. So, so it's the same thing when it comes to having this stuff built. Okay. Um, I know it's a, a little discount or whatever. Once we get, I get my first client or whatever, and I can send them to, uh, Adam, they could give me like a. Well, I think I think it's like twenty five or forty percent when you're in the affiliate. So yeah, exactly. That's not the problem. The problem is me. <laughs> uh, and I understand everything that you're saying. I'm um I think it's like I'm resetting it again for the thousandth time. Um, as you know, it's been like a long time. Like trying to do this, but my question is, uh, focusing like you just went over the whole setup and your steps. My pro my problem is getting to start on the whole email and getting a get those getting that system set up with the lead gen j um i've already been hopped onto linkedin and i've been i've managed to just start and now i'm at like what 300 400 connects and followers so i kind of wanted to go okay. that way with what adam and you guys were saying honestly every day uh tagging somebody trying to you know have, start those conversations um, I just haven't been able to get anybody consistent with jumping on a call. I get ghosted like a lot of times, man. Yeah, it's because most likely they're viewing you as a sales as a sales rep, not not a what's it called? Not like a consulting. Um, so I need to change my whole probably LinkedIn and how i'm approaching no bro i would don't get caught like ra do rather than trying to go back and change shit like i went i went to i'm a part of a pretty big entrepreneurial group and in february we we, we were there one of the 
one of the guys is the co-founder of Ethereum crypto. You know, some of these guys are making forty million dollars a year, and one of the kids literally is a kid. He's like twenty-seven years old. He gets up on our. He got asked to speak, and his name is Josiah. I think highly of him. Him, his wife, and his brother made a Facebook ad agency. He was working in like a restaurant cleaning dishes and hated his job and everything. And he told me something. And he said in his in his speech, he said, in the third year, I made one million dollars profit with three with three people and I don't even have a website. You cannot find me anywhere online. And three of his clients had advertisements on the Super Bowl this year. Well, yeah, this year in February. And it blew me away. And I was like, man, this kid, he's 26, 27 years old, started it when he was 24, made a million dollars profit, has three people. And I was like, what are your systems? Like, how do you, how do you stay organized? He does not send a report to any of his clients. Like everybody wants to have like all these fucking things. It's like, all I do is I focus and I get referrals. That's my secret. And I give results to my clients. And the second that they see results, they go and they tell their friends because I ask them, give me three people in your phone right now that I could go and speak to that this would benefit them the way that it has benefited you. And then they connect him and he goes and does it. And he does not send out a report. He does not send out like, Here's how many leads we had. Here's how many clicks we had. Here's what your dollars being spent are doing. They just see money coming in and, and what's it called? Um, they see money coming in and they see or the results from how, how his, his Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Google ads work for them. And so my suggestion to you is don't go back and change your stuff. Don't, don't go do that. Go take that four hour class with, with Lee Jung J. When you have, and, and do, do some research, consultative sale. There's a guy named Jer Jeremy Minner. I follow him on Instagram. My Jeremy Minner, Jeremy Minner, Jeremy Minner. Understand, like, like I take away one, one of the things I said to Dave in here when I was talking to, to Scott, to his question. Look. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but I used what Jeremy Minner said on his Instagram the other day. I remember it, it was like, you know, I, I don't know, uh, the price is too high or something like that. I, I don't know, but I always take little snippets from him. And, and I've also been doing sales for quite some time, but learn the consultative sales approach. It, it, it will skyrocket you very quickly. It's the same way that I got you guys in here that you're asking questions to me. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really not selling anything, but like I sold you guys on coming into this meeting and it's because I provide value out value. And the way that Lee Gen J is going to tell you how to send out your emails is value, value, value. In my cold emails, I do not ask for a booked call until my sixth email. And that is like seven days later. And I have value, value, value. Now on the landing pages on the fourth and fifth email, they can go and they can go and um, make the booking inside the case study that I send or or the videos that I send. But that's up to them. But you just provide value, value, value. Then they realize and the wording of your emails, right? Now emails eight, nine, ten, eleven. Those are sales emails. If you've been reading my fucking emails and you have been clicking on my emails, but you haven't booked a call, now it's time to book a call because I ran out of value and give it to you. It, it's like, you're either in or you're out, bro. Like, get off my list or write back and say, you know, fuck off. <laughs> um, like, why are you reading my emails? What, 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 what do you, you want to do here? Right. So, um, but... I really would focus on the consultative sales approach and then do it. And I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but like, it's like when you meet a girl for the first time that you 
you like. Yeah, right. You don't tell her like, hey, what's up? You're sexy. Like, you want to get married next week? No, that would be super weird, right? If I if I opened up the state and said, hey, guys, I had a course for $97 or $300, it's like, bro, I don't want to come to this stupid... Like, it's just another sales pitch, right? That's how everybody is. Maybe back in 2010, 2011, 2012... Man, I wish I knew what I knew now back then because life would have been way different. But now there's so much competition. Everybody's trying to sell you something. And so you have to really hit their pain points. Talk to ChatGPT like I showed you and just figure out how to build a machine and a way to feed that machine. And everything else will come naturally because now you'll only be on phone calls with people that are ready to pull out their wallet and pay you because they see the value in what you're doing. Bro, it's taken me years to figure this out. I made a course on how to save money and travel the world because I bought a, a house in in New York and I thought like, oh man, I'm going to teach everybody how to do this. I did not have anything of value to, to do. Um... I accidentally made a YouTube channel. I just sent my YouTube channel here. Subscribe to that and I'll, I'll upload all these videos. But I accidentally made a YouTube channel when I bought my house in Mexico. And what I did was I took my Zoom calls like this of me talking to the developer and asking questions because I wanted to buy a house. I ended up buying the house, and from those YouTube videos, people were like, hey man, can you connect me with that developer? He didn't think, like, like, I trust you because you already went to the process. And then I went to the developer, and I was like, hey man, let's make a YouTube channel, just upload a bunch of Zoom calls. And he was like, that sounds stupid. Why would we do that? I'm like, bro, people are asking for it. I sold $10 million worth of real estate in 18 months from a silly YouTube channel that had like 600 subscribers and it was because they found me i i wouldn't even know how to go find somebody in the united states hey you want to buy a house in tulum like i i i don't know where i would even start to do that like i i don't know how to do that but when i started just being myself and not trying to convince anybody of doing things but just saying like, hey, look, this is what I do. This is what I have. Um, if you're down, jump on a call with me and maybe I can help you. Okay. Um, Katie, the Legion, all the documents are in, uh, all the links are in that document I sent above that Google Drive link or in the descriptions on all my YouTube videos. I I'm just going to make one document to rule them all. Like that way, just I didn't see that. I'm on my phone, so I didn't see that other part. But right? eh, it's okay. Yeah, if you look in the comments on the YouTube videos, it'll just all be right there. But the thing about um, what Raul and Cody and Adam and Brendan are teaching with all of the like thinker AI with all, all of that stuff, it's great. Um, but don't get caught up in that. Go get clients first and then just sell it to them. And don't buy it. I mean, you can buy it, but like I'm not going to buy it until I have a client that is like, yeah, I'm in. And then I just, I'll just i sell it and I'll just buy it at that point. Right. Um, the idea is to get as many clients as you can. The other thing is, is I said this in the beginning, dude, my goal is to get you guys to build this machine. Go and build this machine. If you don't know how to sell, call me, add me to the call. I'll help you sell it. And if we're paying Adam and Brendan $5,000 to build it, we sell this for $8,000. i will take 1000 You keep two. And then you take the 297 the 197 the 497 a month. And I just made 1000 bucks to close the deal for you, but you didn't pay for it. You don't have to pay me. But the client's going to pay, right? And if... If they give pushback, it's like, okay, we were going to sell it for eight. We're, we're getting it built for five. So there's a $3,000 margin. Now we have, we have cushion. So now it's like, okay, sell it for seven. And then we split the 2000, we split the 2000. So you get a thousand, I get a thousand, you know, I, whatever, whatever it is, we can decide that when it comes to that, but like, 
use me as much as we're using Adam and Brennan as our fractional development team, use me as your fractional sales team. Like I, I would love to do that. Like that's, that's a goal of mine is to help. If I can help everybody build these machines to get the prospects, to sell it in a standardized approach that I'm, that I'm, that I'm doing that working for me, then at that point, you don't even need to know how to sell anymore. Sit behind a computer and just get a bunch of fucking meetings set up, invite me with the calendar link, and me and you are just sitting on calls, closing them, and we're getting paid and handing it off to Adam and Brandon and let them figure out how to build it. It's not our problem. And, and I mean that in a good way. Yeah. Like, that's what they want too. Yeah, they want more work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So just getting this whole email list and getting everything the the system place so that we can have that set up to where it's functioning and we can have a passed off at ease for us on a on the back end. Yeah, I made a post yesterday in the private group and I thought about this a lot. Like there's three words automate, delegate, eliminate. And I never really really understood it. Brandon always talks about it. He always tells me, you know, this is the three things that we do. And I sat down and I started thinking about it. And I'm like, that means different things for different people, because for them, they automate the bills. They delegate the work to their team. And then they eliminate things that just are holding them back. Right. And so for me, that means something different for me. And, and what I'm doing, I automate my lead outreach prospecting i delegate my work to them and then i eliminate clients that are not going to pay me 150 250 bucks because i don't want to deal with it i've done that three times now i have had shitty clients and it causes stress it ruins my momentum it makes me feel like i'm doing something wrong because they're either narcissistic or or like just not people that i want to deal with and and they didn't want to pay 150 bucks or 250 bucks up front. And now it's like, how do I catch that red flag saying no? When I started saying no and I started raising my prices for that 150, I started dealing with legit people who were like, yeah. And they, out of respect, see that and they're like, yo, this guy's different. Like, I like the way he operates. And it's not a salesperson. So if you're going on LinkedIn and you're getting ghosted, it's because I made a post in the in the group too. Is like, um, I made a post in the group about a like selling five thousand. Yeah. With nine ninety seven is the wrong way, and in that thing I wrote about just you're being viewed as a salesperson. You're not being viewed. People want to buy. They don't want to be sold to. So think of the last time that you bought something or today, why did you come to this meeting? It's like, because I'm not selling you anything, but I am. I want to be on your calls and I'm going to take a thousand dollars from your sale, but you want me there. Like that's the difference, right? I mean, we just had that. We just had that conversation. I sold that to you without you feeling sold. You were like, yeah, I'm in. I, if, if I said, Hey, bro, go do all this work, figure out how to do that, and then pay me $1,000 to be on your call. You'd be like, oh, bro, why would I do that? Huh. <laughs> do you see how I positioned it like that? Yeah. So I'm still selling you, but it's a very natural way of selling because you have a problem. Your problem is you can't land the prospect like the way that you want to. You might not have sales experience as as I do, and it, bro, we're two different people. That my, I I have 15 years of sales experience, but I'm here to help you do that. But I'm here to help you to do that to make a thousand dollars while you make two thousand, and you get your your monthly retainer from the client. So I just sold that to you without you even feeling being sold to. But now that I'm explaining it to you, now you can take that and say, huh, how do I position myself like that? Now I understand why I'm being ghosted. You're being ghosted because you're coming to them and saying, hey, you do all the hard work, give me $1,000 and I'll help you. Just flip it. <clears throat> okay. 
Yeah, I'm coming over too strong in the DMs. <laughs> yeah. And and really, the DM is just a conversation. Hey, what's up? What do you do? That's it. I mean, sometimes I get things like that, and I'm like, this guy's trying to sell me something. So be like, yo, bro, I saw your your video on June 23rd when you were down in, in, in I don't know, Playa Carmen. That's where I live. What, what was your favorite restaurant there? And why were you there? I see you do a bunch of AI stuff. Like that is a little bit more natural. And then he'd be like, oh, yeah, my favorite one is Casa Sofia. I do this. Yeah, I do AI. What do you do? Why, you know, I I, I follow you. You popped up in my, in my, uh, even if they didn't, you popped up in my explore page. Like you must be doing something right that I'm not. Do you have any tips for me? And then let him tell you what he does and let him tell you the tips that he does. Ah, that's cool, bro. I never thought of that. What I do is I sell AI automations and I'm really struggling at, you know, being able to find right clients for that. But I've been, my partners, man, they've been helping tons of people with their business. And now it's a regular conversation and he might come back and be like, what kind of AI do you do? Do you do anything like with voice AI? Don't get excited at that point. Right. Yeah. I've been dabbling in the, in the voice AI, um, what we do is we actually get, we qualify leads. So like, I don't know, you might have a bunch of people that are coming into your, your, your DMs right now. And like, you probably use a thing called mini chat, right? Something, something like mini chat. And then now it's turning into a conversation. Yeah, I do use mini chat. All right. Has that been working for you? Because <laughs> that's one of my competitors and that's what we've really really that's what we're really good at and now it's putting the ball in his court to ask you the questions okay yeah i do use many chat um whatever 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 and you go back and forth and be like dude if you're using many chat and you have a youtube channel and you're doing this and doing that it might make sense to just chop it up for 10 minutes on a call like i i might be able to help you i wasn't expecting to to get on a call with you like, right? Like drop their guard down. Like I didn't expect this conversation to go that way. Although you did. And you're like, dude, I mean, yeah, let's, let's connect, bro. Like I'm, I'm down. I'm in a group on Sundays. We talk about go high level. You ever heard about go high level? Yeah. Yeah. We use that. Dude, our AI would incorporate perfectly into that. We don't even use the AI. We built our own proprietary software that gets put into to go high level. So you wouldn't even have to change anything. This actually, now that we're talking about it, it might make sense to just jump on a 10 minute call just to see what's up. And that right there, you didn't sell anything. You sold him on a meeting. Now in the meeting, you go and you sell him the $150 um, proposal, the $150 deep, uh, project scope document. And you just move them along little by little as you would if you're going on a date with a girl the first time you met her. It, okay. it, that that's how it works that consultative sales it's a skill set that took me a long time to learn i don't expect you to do it right away because we think ah i'm paying for this i got rent i gotta do this i need to make two thousand dollars okay look i have this it costs two thousand dollars want to buy it no i don't want to buy it right okay. so learn spend a lot of jeremy fire is great he really is i think he's a little cocky but huh. his skill set is is really really good and that's how i know how to sell but learn consultative sales i, I got that book that you posted and you and raul i think it's L nlp uh nlp yeah. that is like the crux of of um that is like the crux of what's it called of consultative sales because it's basically pulling separating your logical brain from your emotional brain like for instance if i asked you what do you like on the weekends tell me what you like doing on the weekends reading writing you know okay here's nlp language what's something that gets your heart pumping so much and you feel invigorated if you could do something like that on the weekend what would you do Oh, working out. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't read books, right? Like right. for me, it's like, you ask me that. Yeah. I like the scuba dive. 
I like to ride my motorcycle, play golf, or it's like, man, I want to jump off a cliff with one of those squirrel suits and go like paragliding, right? Because it separates your logical brain from your, from your, your, um, your emotional brain. And so you tap into the emotional thing, like sales reps will do this when they're, you know, selling a house. Imagine the status that you're going to have with your friends, drinking a beer, sitting on the stoop after you purchase this house and your wife lays in bed next to you and says, I think we really made a great purchase, Emotion. right? It's yeah. It's not like, yeah, you guys are going to love this house. You, you, the family, the kids are going to love their bedroom and you know, it's going to be the neighbors are great. No, it's like your status is going to go up. Your wife's going to love you. And you're, you know that you made a great purchase and an investment because it's going to go up in a couple of years, but you, you do it in a different way. Right. So, all right, let's do two more and then I'm going to go play golf. Thank you. All right, Katie, uh, you go ahead. Cause I'm just going in order how the hammer is. Okay. Um, with the thinker AI, and since you're working with Brandon and everyone, do we have a choice of what AI system that we're using? And since they're the ones doing the build? Yeah, we integrate everything with ChatGPT. Um, you, I mean, you can, like, if you wanted to use something else other than Thinker, uh, you could, but if you're selling a custom build with AI, now you're putting a little bit of stress on, you know, Jarrell, who's going to be building it out. Now, when I get into conversations like this, we're going from point A, Mr. Client, to point Z. You have a problem and you want AI to make a phone call to just land you a qualified lead on a call or on a, on a, on a meeting, on a Zoom call. I'm not going like when you go to a football game or a basketball game and you get a hot dog, you just want a hot dog with mustard and, and, and ketchup on it. You could care less how the hot dog was made. If you knew how the hot dog was made. You probably wouldn't eat it. Right. So it doesn't, we're, we're only worried about A to Z. We're worried about the, the hot dog with the condiments. We're not worried about how or what the process is in between all of that. Because once you start getting into those conversations, the, the client loses you and, and it, it doesn't end up in a sale. So I think the reason why you were asking that is what if a client asks me, can we use this, this, or that? What's the difference? The goal is still the same and we can streamline that because we're the professionals. We know how to do this. We've done this time and time again. No, it, it, that's a conversation that you shouldn't have. And if you find yourself in those conversations, use that example. Mr. Klein, when you go to a football game, you get a hot dog. You put mustard and, and mayonnaise on it, or not mayonnaise, but mustard and ketchup. Uh, um, you know, do you if, if you knew how the hot dog was made, how they killed the pig, what meat they mixed in there, you know, did the meat touch the floor, like the dirty spot, you wouldn't eat it, right? So use that and just be like, no, we're focused on, we're a solution bait we are a solution based company and your problem is this and you want to get to that we know how to do that that was one question there was another reason why i asked that question um the, the my biz my business partner the one that actually brought me into this world um because he knew of my marketing strength he's had the voice ai system since last um since like september so we have our own system um and that's why i was asking because if because we've been talking about going to the partner plant he was a partner years ago when they first started you know um jason marshall you know who jason marshall is okay so jameson already has the ai but we also like thinker ai so I was just saying, if we decided to do a build, would we be limited to the Thinker AI compared to the AI system that we have? That's why. No, you're not limited. Um, I was I was thinking if you wanted to scale this at like if you wanted to scale this and sell this to other people, it it would just make sense to use Thinker. If you already have something 
like this is what we do, right? So we will find a solution for it. If you already have it, I mean, it's really a matter of just the triggers inside uh, Go High Level workflows that's going to okay. match up with with that. I, I I did something that I usually don't like to do is assume, but I assumed that the first question was for clients. Um, no, I needed both of them because no, 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 you didn't assume because I'm in a situation now where we hired where I did take on a little account and she uses clothes bought and she just bought, we were trying to get her to use another AI system. And she's gone with like a very cheap one, like Seth, Seth, S Y N T H A I or something like that. And I was like, dang, you know, and we already decided that if she goes with that, we're not, yes, yes. That's exactly simple. Yes. And, um, and my whole attitude was, Jason's like, if she does that, we're not building it because we're not training another sister like that. That's going to be her thing. So, you no, you didn't make an assumption. You had me, you helped me answer two different questions because we like the thinker AI too. We just happen to know the developer of the other AI system really well. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that, oh. yeah, and that's fine. Uh, like I said, it would just be uh, a matter of just where are the triggers inside the workflow for when it needs to be triggered. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't think that's that's a problem. Okay. And then I had another question. Um, with the partner, the partner program, you can, so the partner program is 497. Um if we sell a, sell someone, we still have to have the other program, right? The new program that's like 1500 right? I would double check with Adam and Brendan. I want to, I, I can't answer that because I don't know. Because I think that one has like for Adam and Brendan and um, Raul and Cody all together. I just yeah, need to know which one that I'm in, but <clears throat> I I don't know because when we went to LA, things changed for the for for the good. But it used to be the four ninety seven plan. I don't know. I'm gonna make an educated guess. I don't see why Adam and Brendan wouldn't take on business if you brought it to them. Okay. But what I think probably changes is the pricing. So I think with the 497, you get a 25% discount with the 1500 or the, or the, the 1000 or the 2001, you get a 50% discount. I, I, I want, I, I think that don't quote me on that. Okay. I'm in Brandon because I'm not affiliated with, with that. I'm just in the group. Although obviously they're my JV partners. We, we work very closely together, but I don't know their business structure on for that question okay and are they building it in our agency or are they building it in their own agency system so are they building it within our system or are we are or are we having a uh, some some I, account in their system i think when they build it i'd have to look because i i'm actually never even asked that question but i don't know i hope they're building my stuff for me um <laughs> I think they just build it in their system and then with the custom relation the customer relation number they just transfer it to either yours or uh there's the 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 client system once it's built so that you know it's easy you just press a button give it the number and it's in the other account um i think they probably build it in theirs just because their entire team is already logged in that way you don't have to make logins and do all this that and the other thing and then maybe they could just make you a a uh, admin account inside theirs for that sub account, but I I don't know a hundred percent for sure for sure. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, the two K is for a sixty forty split. Oh yeah, that that's what it is. Um. Yeah, I, I just ask Adam and Brendan. Okay. 
All right, cool. So, all right, Scott, last one. I got a quick, I, I, I know you're probably waiting for your tea time, so pretty quick questions. I saw you say hit you up an SMS. I'm not sure what number to use. And then... Um, oh, I sent you, I should have sent you a text from my Go High Level account. You may have, but it's probably sitting in my Google Voice one instead of my other one. So it's, I'm sure, I got it. Yep, I got it. We're good. Second thing is... I know you, you keep talking about the private group. I assume you're talking about the GHLM VIP group. Yeah, that's the one where I'm pretty active in. Okay, and then obviously the new YouTube channel. So those are the best places to follow you and, and do Yeah, that. I'm going to just so be putting everything on, on YouTube and in that private group. Um, I think I'll put more of... The thing is, I don't want to share everything with the outside world. Uh, like these calls I will but I would like to see the people that want to you know take this seriously inside the private group where you have a little bit more access uh, to me and to the group because it benefits those who are in that group right so not to say that everybody's not doesn't meet the standard or whatever, whatever I'm, I'm not trying to say that I'm just saying, you know, I'll post more details in the private group. These videos, I'll put them on the, on YouTube, right? Right. Uh, Cause it's still, it's still good content. I mean, people will learn from it, but uh, yeah. So. And, and the course will actually be in the, the, in, or in the partner group itself. In the, um, cool. Adam is, is he had me send some pictures They're They're almost done with it. I, I made a big course the other day and, uh, he just wants to put like, you know, pictures and make it look presentable for his brand that way. Yeah. I would, I was on a call with, with a club on Friday and he said, Hey, I'll have it done over the weekend. So I'm assuming it'll yeah. be available. He texted, on me, he texted me last night cause I asked him about it. So I think it'll probably be done by Monday. I'm very much looking forward to this again. Appreciate your time. I've kind of blocked time off this week to really dig into your whole method. Last simple question I have for you. I know you, you built out your email system. How many domains are you using for your system or how many email addresses inside of that are you, how big is your farm that you're actually using to do this? I guess I'm at, I have 10, I have 10 domains and each domain has three. So you're doing a 10 by three. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Lee Jen J is the one that set all that up for me. Honestly, I don't know how to set it up properly. Uh, I just paid him 27 bucks and he'd set it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky there. I do know how to do that. I was just curious how, how large a farm you were using. And then in your course, do you kind of walk through the, how you're built, you know, how to build the list and you know, the, the, that's all it is. Yeah. Cool. I appreciate it. That's all I've got. I think this is outstanding. I'm looking forward to Sundays and being here and. Learning yeah, more. me too. I did not expect to have this many people on the call. I literally did this last night at like 1030 and I was like, ah, and then I sent it out and everybody, you guys all showed up. So I really got lucky because I normally don't check my phone on Sunday mornings and for whatever reason I had it up doing stuff that I saw it come across. I'm like, well, he must be next week. So I filled it out and then it said no today. I'm like, oh crap, I got 15 minutes. I changed it to like a wait list to see if anybody would want to do it. And then I was like, oh, I had a bunch of people. I might as well just do it now and then I'll go play golf after Go enjoy your golf. Thanks for all the great information. We really appreciate it. Enjoy your golf, Nick. And of course, we're going to be here. You have an amazing heart and you're really smart. Some of the things that you share, I'm like, why didn't I ever think about that? You know, we're all smart, but you come up with like these gems that I'm like, dang, what was it? Like, okay, that's how you do that. So can't cool. wait till next Sunday. Bye. Yeah. And you. Maybe, we'll, maybe if enough people want and they can't make Sundays, we'll do twice a week. I don't know. I mean, it oh doesn't God. matter to me. Like, I, I'm down. This is what I do every day, all day. Flexible. Yeah, all right. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, man. Hit them yeah. well. Good talk. Thank you. Good talk.